Nova Scotia, fabled western outpost. Acadia, modern-day Nova Scotia, is a derivative of Arcadia, the mythical utopian and idyllic vision of Renaissance mythology. The Acadian people of Nova Scotia and the Cajun people of Louisiana are rumored to be descendants of former Knights Templar. Maurice Gordon was born 1535 in Givet, Ardennes, France. He married who gave Pantaloon. Includes notes notes from Maurice Gordon. 1. Maurice Gordon arrived in Belfontaine in the mid 1500s, not far from Saint S, which for a time was considered as a possible Huguenot and the autonomous canton within France. In the middle 1500s Maurice married who gave Pampaluna, and in 1653 their great-grandson Pierre sailed to the New World. Pierre's wife, Jean Mausolier, was born in 1636 in Mose, saint Saint-Ange. Their descendants would include Anastasi Godin Belfountain, whose married name was Paracopyright, also sometimes spelled Paracopyright T. Maurice Golden married who gave Pantaloon somewhere in the region of Bourgogne, France. As far as I have been able to determine, they had one child named Voral Golden. 2. The following is intriguing as both Maurice Golden Godin and Templar Grand Master Thibault Golden Godin are mentioned. This is taken directly from the following online source, which if you go to it also includes interesting pictures and copies of documents. There are more parts. To go to them. Etc. The Belafontans of Chazette Cook, Nova Scotia descent by way of a knight from Namer named Maurice Godin, who arrived in the town of Belfontain in France in about 1550. The town reputedly was established in the first Christian millennium, founded near the site of the Fountain of St. Blaise, a place considered miraculous. Maurice Godin's great-grandson Pierre Godin assumed the name Pierre Godin de Chidalon at Belfontaine, meaning Pierre Godin from Chidalon and Bellefontaine. This method of naming is a form of patronym, wherein a place name is used as a person's surname. The term did generally is considered a French language term but the word also is seen in old Dutch names as well and therefore the term possibly originally was a Walloon or Flemish word. Maurice Gordon arrived one day in Belfountain where he met and married a woman named who gave Pampaloon de Navarre, said to have been born in Sudan. Champagne but whose surname alludes to the Navarre border territory of the Pyrenees region between France and Spain and where was held one of the first is of heretics but more recent who gave Godin had only one child, a son named Voral, his name for the church he was baptized in, the parish of Saint Voral. Chidalon which was built atop a site dated to the first Christian millennium. Saint Voral is believed to be the man who oversaw the creation of a second sepulchre of Jesus, constructed inside the parish of Chidalon based on drawings of the original tomb, so as to allow pilgrims to visit the tomb of Jesus in a manner of speaking without risking life and limb by traveling to the hostile lands of Phoenicia. Between that second tomb in Shidalon and the original tomb in Jerusalem is located the Bureau Les Templiers, shown on the map above, located southeast of Shidalon. In English, the place name means the Well of the Templars. It was named for the Knights Templar riding from Shidalon, who obtained stores of water from the well for the long journey to the Holy Land during the First Crusades to liberate Jerusalem. Otto de Chidalon was a proponent of the Crusades in Jerusalem. Families from the region of Chidalon were said to have been the hereditary kings of Jerusalem, kings of Cyprus, princes of Antioch, and the lords of Jordan. Incidentally, the Grand Master of the Order of the Knights Templar toward the end of the Crusade era was Terry Godin, who at the fall of Acre succumbed to his wounds. Jacques de Molay, Godin's successor, would be the last Grand Master of the Order of the Knights Templar. Voral Godin had a son named Claude, who was the father of Pierre Godin de Chidalon at Belfountain. 
one of the party of 100 men who sailed to Canada aboard the ship La Flèche and arrived at Villemarie, later renamed Montre Copyright Owl, in late 1653. Upon the arrival of Paul de Chomedy, Pierre Godin, and the others at the village of Mary some of the arrives struck out to explore the vast new continent. The French had sent settlers to the New World before, to Port Royal in 1604 under Samuel Champlain, but the early habitants could not withstand the terrible cold of Canadian winters, and the hostility of certain tribes of natives. And so the Grand Recru of 1653, as it was called, was another effort to establish modern Canada. Pierre Godin Ditchit alone at Bell Fountain was a master carpenter as well as a soldier, sailor and settler and was contracted by the governor of Acadia to rebuild Port Royal in the late 1670s. Pierre married at Montre Copyright Owl and he and his wife Jean Rao Soler lived at Shirting Laurent. Lauren Godin and Montre Copyright Owl, Paul Chomedy. Lauren's kin included Pierre Godin too, the individual who explored much of the territory now called New Brunswick. While Gabriel Godin is considered to be the founder of what is today called Friedericton, capital of New Brunswick. A hundred years after Pierre I. Godin arrived in Canada, the English began reconnaissance of the territory of St. Anand, in 1755, with England and France at peace. The English sent their military forces to carry out a forced repopulation program against the people of what is today called Atlantic Canada. The title holders to the territory of St. Anne were either slaughtered on the spot or brought eventually as prisoners to Halifax, and all of their lands were seized as a of war. In 1737 some Indians robbed an English vessel. Governor Armstrong of Nova Scotia summoned Joseph Belfountain and Michelle Bergeron as interpreters and Belfountain was then also asked to make up a list of the people living on the St. John River. Joseph Godin Belfountain was fluent in Native American and in several European languages which is why the Englanders convinced Joseph into thinking he was doing a good deed. Eventually the townspeople were slain or seized and the town was razed to the ground and subsequently renamed for one of the cousins of the Windsors of London, a Gothic swordsman from Germany named Frederick of Saxony Gotha, while the rest of the land was renamed for the Prussian Prince George von Brunswick did Windsor. I believe we have near 5,000, as they will be useful in getting in wood and other necessaries for the garrison, the general and I propose to. We are determined by no means to let them remain. Peter Warren, July 4, 1745. England's German kings had laid claim to the coat of arms of Gotha, Germany in 1850, but when the Germans went to war against each other half a century later, the fellow living in London who had been hired as king publicly renounced his ancestral past and assumed the alias of Windsor. In one of those strange twists of fate, when the lords of London resolved simply to slay the inhabitants of the territory of St. Anne and steal the land, one of the ancestors of this writer observed a poster nailed to the four sides of the fountain erected in the town of Gotha in honor of the cousin of the King of London, their clansman Frederick, apparently for whom St. Anne later was renamed Friedericton following the massacre. The posters, which were plastered not only in Gotha, but in towns all across Germany, have aired. At tomb, 58 flexes for 10 years, and further privileges, the climate of the land was healthy, the soil productive and fertile, yielding an abundance of everything necessary to support life. This was the start of a plan of forced repopulation begun by the Lords of London shortly after the government of England had declared that the nation's prior king had abandoned the country. Whereupon the Englanders promptly went king shopping in Europe and ended up hiring a madman from Germany. We are now hatching the noble and great project of banishing the neutrals from this province. It will have been one of the greatest deeds the English have achieved. 4. The part of the country which they occupy is one of the best soils in the world. In the meantime it will be necessary to keep this measure as secret. 
On February 28, 1759, soldiers under the command of the King of London attacked the town of St. Anne, where they murdered those inhabitants unlucky enough to have been captured. And then they wiped the town of 147 buildings from the face of the earth, so as to cover up their crimes. This is how De Richten came to be, in the Saxon province of New Braunschweig da too. The remaining surviving members of the Godin Belfountain family, interestingly, were not shipped to concentration camps or to countries around the world like the rest of the Acadian S. Charles Belfountain, Jr. and his wife and eight children subsequently allegedly were forced into slave labor for half a dozen years, including being forced to cut the first English highway in Canada from Halifax to Windsor until the signing of the 1763 treaty between the attacking nation, England, and the other parties to the treaty, Portugal, Spain, and France. Monsignor F. J. Melanson wrote of the family, Ken Colonel Moncton sent a surprise expeditionary force under the heartless officer Moses Hazen, in the winter of 1758-59, many of the Hell's fugitives, including the Bellafontans, were either slaughtered on the spot or brought eventually as prisoners to Halifax. 3. According to authors Sally Ross and Alphonse Darvaux, the Acadians of Nova Scotia, past and present, Nimbus, 1990, Several hundred Acadians were brought to Halifax as prisoners between 1758 and 1762. A certain number of these former prisoners made their way across Halifax Harbor to Chazette Cook. Families to these former prisoners are Boudreaux. <coughs> these same authors note that the last remaining authentic Acadian clothing, stored at the Nova Scotia Museum, are items of clothing worn by members of several generations of the Bellafontans of Chazette Cook including Charles Bellfountain's grey waistcoat. Authors Ross and DeVoe in their work cite Frederick S. Cousins, who visited Nova Scotia in 1856 and who is credited with having written the first travel guide to the province of Nova Scotia, titled Acadia, or A Month with the Blue Noses. It may interest the reader to know that these are the first, the only likenesses of the real Evangelines of Acadia. One the Chazette Cook song, sound recording donated to the Free Directon, New Brunswick Archives in 1958 on the eve of the 200th anniversary of the massacre at St. Anne, by J.J. of Winslow, a likely descendant of Colonel John Winslow. The first line of the song is My name is Belle Fountain, Fontaine, Fontaine. A second copy of the Chazette Cook song is stored in the Nova Scotia government archives, Rec No. 3557, Locke, No. Arkansas 5894 MFNO.289.752 donated by Dr. Helen Creighton. 2 Braunschweig is a city located in Saxony, Germany. It achieved an inglorious fame by making Adolf Hitler a German citizen, which allowed him to candidate for the German Reichstag and become leader of the state. 3 Frederick Joseph Melanson was educated at St. Anne's College and studied canonical law at Rome. He was president of both the Chazette Cook Historical Society and the Genealogical Association of Nova Scotia. More about Maurice Golden. Alternate birth date 1, 1535, Givet, Namur, France. Alternate birth date 2, 1530, Givet and Namur Opaisbas, France. Occupation, horseman and soldier in the province of Namur, France. Children of Maurice Godin and Hugate Pambalunar. Plus Voril Godin Godin, B. 1565. The link will be provided in the video description. Now, another source says this. Maurice and Hugate Godin had only one child, a son named Voril, who was named for the church he was baptized in, the parish of St. Voril. Shudalon which was built atop a site dated to the first Christian millennium. 
Saint Voril is believed to be the man who oversaw the creation of a second sepulchre of Jesus, constructed inside the parish of Chidalon based on drawings of the original tomb, so as to allow pilgrims to visit the tomb of Jesus in a manner of speaking without risking life and limb by traveling to the hostile lands of Phoenicia. Between that second tomb in Shidalon and the original tomb in Jerusalem is located the Bureau of Templiers, shown on the map above, located southeast of Shidalon. In English, the place name means the Well of the Templars. It was named for the Knights Templar riding from Shidalon, who obtained stores of water from the well for the long journey to the Holy Land during the First Crusades to liberate Jerusalem. Otto de Chidalon later Pope Urban II was a proponent of the Crusades in Jerusalem. Families from the region of Chidalon were said to have been the hereditary kings of Jerusalem, kings of Cyprus, princes of Antioch, and the lords of Jordan. Incidentally, the Grand Master of the Order of the Knights Templar toward the end of the Crusade era was Terry Godin, who at the fall of Acre succumbed to his wounds. Jacques de Molay, Godin's successor, would be the last Grand Master of the Order of the Knights Templar. Voral Godin had a son named Claude, who was the father of Pierre Gondichidalon at Belle Fountain. One of the party of 100 men who sailed to Canada aboard the ship La Flèche and arrived at Villemarie, later renamed Montreal, in late 1653. Again, the source will be provided in the video description. My personal note. It makes very much sense that the Acadians are linked to the Knights Templar. Maybe even their descendants, because the Acadians' ancestors came primarily from the rural areas of the Vendée region of western France, which also happens to be associated with the Knights Templar. Indeed, located in the loire Cher region of France, this extensive and well-preserved Templar complex became a key training and recruiting center producing knights who would join the crusader armies in the Holy Land, with region in France, which is only three hours away by car from the Vendée region in France. I understand they were riding horses back then but remember, but remember and I quote from the information already provided in English, the place name means the Well of the Templars. It was named for the Knights Templar riding from Chidalon, who obtained stores of water from the well for the long journey to the Holy Land during the First Crusades to liberate Jerusalem. Links will be provided in the video description. Why I also tend to think that at least some Acadians are descendant from Knights Templar is the fact that the descendants of Jesus was persecuted. Why do you think they were burning the red-haired women during the Inquisition? I am not saying that all red-haired women accused of witchcraft were all descendants of Jesus and Marie Magdalene, but they made very damn sure to irradiate their descendants is my point. Not to mention the Knights Templars were also persecuted and I know for a fact that the Acadians were also persecuted. I will eventually post videos about this, or give you the links in the comments section. so I have raisons to believe that at least some Acadians are direct descendants from Knights Templar. You will tell me that they had the reputation to not have wives. That is correct, but understand that the nature is stronger than the oaths, especially in regard to procreation. It is absolutely natural to make love and have children and when you deny that, Nature comes back. You cannot fight nature nor your nature. Thabago Dan was the Grand Master of the Knights Templar from August 1291 until his death in April 1292. The history of Thabago Dan within the Order is rather mysterious. Born to a noble family in the area of Chartres or Blois, France, he entered the Knights Templars well before 1260, because on that date he was taken prisoner during an attack on Tiberias. His great piety was deemed worthy of the nickname of Godin Monk. In 1279, Sir Thabat fulfills the function of commander of the land of Jerusalem, the fourth most important function in the Templar hierarchy. In 1291, 
He rides at the side of Guillaume de Beijing to defend the town of Acre, besieged by the formidable army of Mamluk Sultan al Ashraf Khalil. On the 18th of May, upon the death of Guillaume de Beijing, Godin remains in the city of Acre in garrison with some 500. Thabar Godin and Pierre de Suffrey, Marshal of the Order, are the last two knights of the temple who continue to defend Acre al Ashraf Khalil sends messengers to the defenders of the castle of the temple in order to negotiate an honorable outcome. Thabar Godin and Pierre de Sevry agree to yield to the conditions dictated by the Sultan and let a detachment of Muslim riders into their enclosure. As soon as the soldiers entered, they caught some French women. Thinking that to be reason is act, Thabar Godin and Pierre de Sevry ordered the Muslims be thrown out of the walls. The two dignitaries decide that Thabar Godin will leave the city by sea carrying the treasures of the temple, while Pierre de Sevry will continue the combat. Acre falls the following day. Thabar Godin arrives at Sidon with some knights where he is elected master and decides to defend the city as long as possible. Just before the arrival of Amir al Shuyai, the inhabitants evacuate the city and take refuge behind the walls of the Templar castle. With the assistance of Cypriots, the majority of the inhabitants and garrison evacuate the fortress to take refuge in Cyprus. Arriving at Cyprus, Sabad Godan tries to gather reinforcements, but they, reach the but they never reach the Holy Land. Sidon falls to the Muslims on July 14, 1291. The last French strongholds in the Kingdom of Jerusalem fall by one. Beirut is taken on July 21. The area of Kaifa is invaded and the monasteries of Carmel destroyed on July 30th. In early August, the Franks hold nothing more than two fortified towns, both occupied by Templars. Tordos is evacuated on August 3rd and Castle Palerin on August 14th. By then, all Templars are located in Cyprus and Ruad in the south of Tordos, which will remain in their hands until 1303. In October 1291, a general chapter of the order meets in Cyprus. This meeting confirms the election of Thabar Godin as Grand Master and names new dignitaries and the important positions within the hierarchy of the order. On that occasion, Jacques de Malay was named Marshal, to succeed Pierre de Suffrey, who died at Acre. Thabar Godin tried to reorganize all the Templars in the devastations of the recent battles. Moreover, it was necessary for him to defend the Kingdom of Armenia from the encircled Turkish Seljukids and the island of Cyprus, occupied by a multitude of refugees. Apparently the task proved daunting for Thabar Godan. He died of exhaustion at the beginning of the year 1292, leaving an enormous rebuilding task for his successor. Now, you may think there is a problem between this intriguing Maurice Golden Templar Grand Master and Terry Golden Templar Grand Master. They are one and the same because Terry Golden was styled the Bar Godin and their stories concur. You have to listen and revisit the links if you do not see that. While Braddock was suffering defeat and Johnson's campaign was ending in stalemate, the British achieved military victory in Nova Scotia, formerly the French colony of Acadia. They drive French forces from the region. The British governor is determined to ensure that the territory remains securely in British hands. He orders the systematic expulsion of all French-speaking settlers from the region. I therefore order all the inhabitants, both old men and young men, as well as all the lads of 10 years of age, to attend the church at Grand Pre on Friday the 5th instant at 3 of the clock in the afternoon. The duty I have now, though necessary, is very disagreeable to my nature and temper, as I know it must be grievous to you, 
who are of the same species as I am. Your lands and tenements, cattle of all kinds, and livestock of all sorts are forfeited to the crown with all your other effects except your money and household goods. And you yourselves are to be removed from this province. No! There is no more! John Thomas, a doctor with Winslow's troops, kept a meticulous journal during the autumn of 1755. September 2nd. Pleasant day, Lieutenant John Indicott on shore with men to burn a village at a place called Katiaja. September 18th. Very hard gale of wind, much rain and snow. Major Pribble returned with his party, having burned 200 houses and barns. A third of the Acadians who were deported will die of typhoid, smallpox, or yellow fever. Acadians, who had called the land home for a century, are dispossessed of their farms and fishing boats. Whole villages are emptied and families herded to the coast. The operation is carried out with chilling efficiency. Over the next three years, 10,000 of them are shipped to the British colonies. Many Acadians make their way to Louisiana, where they become known as Cajuns. Quebec is now a wartime city. Its streets overflow with French soldiers, Acadian refugees, and native warriors. When the deportation ends, only 165 French families remain in Acadia. And in 1756, the wind of war that blows over North America will become a hurricane. Vaudreuil and Montcalm will never agree on how to conduct the war. In one attack, Vaudreuil sends 300 raiders against the community of German flats in the Mohawk Valley. They kill 50 settlers, take 32 scalps, and 150 women and children as prisoners. The British head slowly up the Hudson River from New York. Meanwhile, Montcalm's forces travel to St. Lawrence from Montreal. The French stop the British advance at Fort Oswego. With the help of 250 Indians, the French capture the fort in just three days. After the battle, the Indians take the trophies of war. Plunder and captives are proof to their people that their enemies have been defeated. What the Indians consider their code of honor, Montcalm regards as savagery breaking all the rules of European warfare. He agrees to pay ransom for the British captives and vows to restrain the Indians next time. 